Hey, what's up guys? This is Mike from Mike's Reef. Just wanted to come back to you with a little update. So a couple different things that I've done is, uh, well, first of all, the water's not going to be too clear because I just got done scraping the sides and stuff like that. So, you know, a little daily maintenance before I go to work. But uh, anyway, a couple different things. One, I adjusted some power heads. The uh, Euphelia's there on the bottom right. Those guys were constantly getting beat up and I could never figure out how to adjust these Jabo wave makers uh, correctly to where the torch is getting the right amount of flow, the euphilias are getting the right amount of flow. As you can see, the green star polyps, those guys are loving it. And uh, also, too, trying to find the right balance with the anemone as well, so it's not getting thrown all the way around. I noticed a couple pieces of my euphilia had actually broken off and ended up in another place in the tank, so uh, that needed to be adjusted for sure. So, a couple other things is still finishing up this diatom bloom here, constantly on the sides of the glass. As you can see, it's all over the rocks, I'm trying to get that down. Um, probably just gonna have to ride that out. However, all the parameters look fine on this tank, really. Uh, everything seems to be really good. Balancing my alkalinity and calcium right now, just to get it back to par. Uh, everything's pretty decent in that range, though. So I'm cruising about 8.4 for alkalinity, about 375 for uh, calcium there, and about 1200 give or take for magnesium so I'm still dosing on that but by far parameters aren't too bad all right guys so that's it for the basics so what we're gonna do here is uh, I want you to check out one of my clowns uh, for some reason the female has just been acting weird for the past couple days she's not eating um, she doesn't look bad besides her little battle scars that she has but however Still, because it's one of our babies, we get worried about her. So, I'm going to zoom in here. So, their home is that torch. So, what you'll see is that the male and the female both stay really close to that torch. And actually, because of that, the torch is kind of sucked in. So, the thing's got about four heads on it now. The third one just split off. So, it's quickly becoming a good fourth so they both kind of stay close to it but however you'll notice the one farther in the back that's the female so her battle scars are the uh, little pieces she has nipped off her tail but anyways so for the past two days like I said she hasn't been eating that's where she's been staying pretty much so and then last night she turned uh, a shade of white that I had actually seen in the coal tang here and you know we were really worried about her but as soon as i flipped on the blue lights she instantly turned back colors so i thought it was just the blue lights but even when i turned on the whites her color was back she just seemed really pale last night but uh yeah like i said everything else in the tank seems fine corals and all i mean i had some zoas that didn't open up all the way and those guys are pretty much goners but you know that's sometimes the risk that you take whenever you buy coral you know but i mean you guys see it everything else looks pretty decent so i'm gonna keep my eye on her and see what's All going right guys, on. So here's something I haven't really put too much in my videos before. It's my sump area. So the main things here is cable management. As you can see, it's a beast to get off these cables and you know, you get this nice looking sump and then by the time you put all these cables into it, it just looks like crap. So I bundled them up the best that I could, zip tied them all up together. And uh, so it goes directly out the back and then uh, the individual ones come back in so all the excess is hanging out the back there but anyway it's not hanging inside the sump so that's all I care about right this second it could be better so I still have the puck lights and everything use those guys um, I'm gonna get a mount to put that switch on there so that'll end up staying up top and kind of out of the way but the skimmer and all that's running great couldn't ask for any better uh, I've been trying to take the turkey baster and uh, you know, swishing that around on the bottom right, just picking up all that detritus and stuff that just stays down there at the bottom. So you know, letting the uh, skimmer suck that up. I got it going pretty good as far as the wet skim. So it's not too much of a dry skim. And uh, I'm having to watch that and make sure my tank stays balanced and you know, especially with salinity as it pulls it out of the water. But, uh, you know, I feed a lot of nori to that tang, 
and then just in general do heavy feedings just because you know we we love our babies so you know we just spoil them a little bit but that's why I ramp up the filtration and try to make sure everything's in check so but in between the first baffle there I've been playing around with that and that's one of the biggest things that I've been having issues with is small bubbles in the tank you know that's something that's unsightly to me probably doesn't hurt the fish or the coral but you know I wanted to look as clean as possible especially whenever you have people come over you know you want to show off what you got so you know you want it to be a nice perfect display it is an art piece in your room after all so anyways I'm just using the little filter pads that came with it taking those out every once in a while and cleaning them off so it really doesn't collect much either I mean it mainly bubbles but there's a few pieces that you know are stuck in there that needs to be gotten off but uh, anyways so the next step is I'm gonna take the sump and actually uh, vacuum it out with a shop vac to get everything out of the bottom it's just sand that was built up from initially setting up the tank that has since settled so all that stuff needs to get out of there Chato's kind of floated over to the other side and I'm going to uh, remove that stuff out of there so it doesn't make its way into the display so haven't quite decided yet I mean you guys tell me if you think that there's something I could do better in this regard as far as you know should I put more filter pads or something on the left hand side before the return pump uh, the, the ones on the right seem to be doing pretty well because I noticed most of my bubbles were coming from the skimmer itself and then actually the uh, overflow line going inside it was just bypassing the skimmer compartment and going directly into the refugium so you know crap starts building up in there as well but uh working on a little something hopefully me and a guy that I know is uh, really good with electrical we're going to uh, try to automate this bad boy without having to go to an apex so I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about it but uh, you know we're gonna try to our, our own little project and see if we can't get some basics here mainly lights uh, you know skimmer return pump stuff like that um, especially heater I don't trust that heater as far as I could throw it and uh, I need some kind of backup on there to make sure that if it goes up too high it doesn't fry my tank so that's the first piece that I really want to work on but uh, anyways be some more on that in the later future so I just need to decide what route I need to go but anyways if you guys have any comments put them down below like subscribe